This week's podcast is sponsored by Honor, the leading supplier for sleep and pre-workout supplements. Check out that page on Instagram at Honor or Honor.co. Three, two, one, boom. Jordan Watson. Hey, mate. <laughs> uh, thank right? you for coming on, mate. I've really been looking forward to this because we've got so much cool shit to talk about. Um, firstly, I've been asking people what they've been getting up to in lockdown and that. And you're in that group of the people who've been doing crazy shit. Mm. You went out for a jog one day and just ran a marathon, which has now led on to you running the free peaks this weekend. How did that happen? What the fuck went on? Well, I messaged that morning dinner. I yeah. said, you know what, Lee? I think I'm doing a marathon today. <laughs> but you know, like, I, know, I didn't believe you. You messaged me a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, a lot of time, I know. I thought, nah, <laughs> he blazed up again. <laughs> well, that might have something to do with it. Yeah. But yeah, I just like, do you know, like when you have them good days at the gym where you've like, you know, you, you feel like you can't be touched and you feel like you're full of energy. You feel like, oh, I wish I could fight today. It was just one of them days. I just thought, right, yeah, this is the day I'm going to do. Because I didn't have what else to do. Apart from me, Lucy's been baking. My girlfriend, she's been baking fucking lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> putting 500 grams of sugar in every slice. So I thought, I better start running. I better start doing something because I'm just getting fat. So I started doing a few runs. And then I think it was, a, you know, I think it was a baking that helped. To be fair. <laughs> she was giving me that much sugar. I had that much energy. Um, I was going on some crazy runs. I did like 15k, and then I thought. I know you kept asking me to come as well, and I kept feeling bad because I, I can't fucking do that. I can't run out, though. My knees are fucked. My, uh, most of my running these days, yeah, you know, yeah, sprint work for on a treadmill and that. And I wanted to come, but then when you said you run a marathon, like, I thought, oh, man, nah, I can't do it. Nah, can't man, do it. I've seen you on them treadmills. <laughs> You're eating 20 all the time, and it's too, it's too hard. I'm, 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 I'm a leisurely, I'm a leisurely runner at the moment, <laughs> but I've been getting pretty fast, but. I've been running. I've been doing the fell running. Like I've been going uh, with. I'm. I'm. I've met this crazy postman. <laughs> and he's like, are, are all postmen really fit? <laughs> Do a lot of walking. Cause like this, like I don't know. Like I, 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 he's a postman. His friends a postman. He's fit as fuck as well. <laughs> I've been going training. With, they're, they're walking like 15 miles a day. Then they're coming training at night time. But he's a um, yeah. I, w- I went. Um, he's. I went on a holiday and uh, I met him. He's a uh, friend with you know Foxy the PT. Yeah. He's. Uh, he's friends with Foxy. Um, and uh, he took me on some runs and absolutely kicked my ass. It were um, in January, and then um, I've been doing a few training sessions with him. And um, him and his pal Kev Bapti and his pal Wayne, they've been doing the fell running thing. And like, it's like a new, it's like a new type of running because I've been running on roads. It's scary. It's, it's scary running down hills that as fast as you're running up the hill, or even faster, obviously. But that's scary shit, though. Yeah, mate. To be fair, I've nearly fallen in fucking river a few times. <laughs> he had us running through river air. <laughs> I came out, I should have smelled me. <laughs> I smelled horrible. It's like a cesspit. <laughs> My legs were burning. <laughs> but, but I felt happy. <laughs> I felt like I'd achieved something. So how did you get decide to run up the three peaks? Sounds like you three just training together and then you said, right, let's do something crazy. Do, let's do that. Well, do you know, like, when you start running with your friends and there's always a bit of friendly competition and, like, you always start to do one bigger on each other, don't you? Yes. Like, it's like, oh, let's go do a 10K run and, like, oh, yeah, let's do a 20K run. And then one guy always goes like, you know, let's fucking run a free man. <laughs> and then you never want to say no, do you? So I, thought, I just went like, uh, my mate Andy rang me up and went, oh, do you want to run the free peaks? And I just went, yeah, yeah, why not? Sounds, what's a peak? <laughs> <laughs> peak's a peak, isn't it? It can't be that big. I walked I walked up one of them before and they're like, you know, it was nice. Uh, that, something like that comes down to like your mental strength, obviously. And I've mentioned this a few yeah. times with my previous guests and, you are have the, some of the best mental fortitude you'd ever come across. Because like when you put your mind to something, you do it to the full extent. No matter what it is, even if it's good or bad, yeah. you fucking yeah. do it to the extreme, don't you? Well, so- I'm an abuser. <laughs> <laughs> I will abuse anything yeah. if I can. If it gives me pleasure. <laughs> Drink, drugs, pizza, <laughs> ice cream, Peeps, running. Yeah. Anything that like stimulates me in the slightest way. If I get, if I get on a, if, if it gives me that good feeling, then um, I'll just abuse it and I wear it out until you know <laughs> to the not left. So I feel like I did the marathon and um, like I got up that day and I thought right today's the day. I had about ten slices of lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> and I thought right, <laughs> that's about nine thousand calories. I'll have to burn them on. <laughs> I got up um, and then I, t- I text you. I said right, I'm going Lee. And then um, I, I, I set off. I set off from mine and I, and I and I planned on running to to my to my work. It's in Pudze. It's like um, I don't know. It's far away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought, do you know what? I feel that good. I'm going to make it hard. So I went on some crazy routes. I went and run up golf courses and fucking downhills and uphills and right around Leeds. 
And then uh, I got... I got were you watching your, your miles or were you just running and not, not even thinking about that? I had my headphones on. Mm. And you know the beats? Like, they're like, you're in your own world. Would you, you have on Wu-Tang? I, yeah, you know, but after a while, I had some crazy hip hop shit on some gangster rap stuff. Yeah. But then it started getting makes a bit. You, makes you run fast, that, doesn't yeah, it? When you get a bit mad and you go a bit too fast. Yeah, you, you exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, 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 they, were, they were hilling this golf course and they had like, I had, I had some crazy Wu Tang shit on, some, some kill him, kill him, kill him, yeah. kill him. So I'm like, yeah, killing the hill. But then after that, I like, I had a bit of Tracy Chapman on oh. at some point, some nice, you know. Yeah. You know, a bit of Duran Duran. You know? <laughs> bit of Duran Duran. <laughs> Gay! of um <laughs> shit songs <Yeah. laughs> but um i just i just kept going and going and going and um but i thought i want a good vibe you know like you know remember we like we, we get gym on monday and we go like train four times yeah. and by wednesday we're fucked yeah yeah, it yeah. Wouldn't end us. so like i was doing hill sprints up these gold course hills i got some steps in that canal and i thought right you know what i'm gonna run up these 10 times <laughs> <laughs> so did then, you do 10 times yeah of course i did yeah. <laughs> or up and down I mapped it and everything um, for kid, and I'm looking at thinking, oh shit, that's that bit when I've been an idiot and running up and down steps. And um, so eventually I got to work, and I thought, as I was getting to work, I thought, right, you know what, I'm gonna run up. And I got there, took a picture, my battery died, and I thought, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd done 20, 27 miles, 27 and a half miles. Oh, mile. it's even more than a marathon, then you yeah, got yeah, over it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I need, yeah, I, 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 I could have finished, but I thought, I thought I might just cut it short. So I went on this big, you know, I went on this big hill upside of Leeds going, coming towards Bradford Roundabout. I know that one. I know the one near Richard's house. Near Richard's yeah, I know, house. I know. Ooh, and it, mate, it's it, massive that. Mate, it don't it, stop. It lasted forever. Yeah. But I finished on like, uh, I had some like, um, what did I have on? I had a- um, <laughs> Dire Straits. No, I had um, Led Zeppelin on. Oh, did you? Stay away to heaven. <laughs> mate, and on that hill and I thought, this sort of stay away to heaven now, pop her in the zone, you know what I mean? I was loving it. <laughs> But I got to I got to the um I got to Hatchways. I took a photo over there and then I was fucked, mate. How about do you have after day after and that and well two days three days after all your legs? I ran next day. Did you? Yeah, because I thought Something I was wrong I with would, you. No, I would have been a fucking <laughs> smart smart cunt, mona. <laughs> so I got up next day and I thought, yeah, I fucking note that. <laughs> Wait, what? I'll, I'll show myself. Yeah, so I'll show me who's boss. Mate, I'm having a, I'm having a battle with myself. <laughs> fake. Um, I thought, fucking hell, we know that. I'll run another. So I think I never did another like 15k the next day. And then the next day, <laughs> you know, when like the Dom's lit, uh, say, saying, my Achilles fucked it up. It, it, it clicks still now. Yeah. So I had like. So then I went into remission then. <laughs> a proper fell, long down. Like yeah. a bit. <laughs> Lemon drizzle, but with no runs. Yeah, I, I own like two for Tuesdays, Domino's, feel good Fridays. I don't know what they're called. Well, but. what what happened with me is when lockdown started, I see everyone doing all these mad runs and shit, but I just had my fight and I had them two big fucking holes in my leg. Man, I know. Which then <laughs> both got infected, which took it longer. So by the time I, wanted, I couldn't go out of house to go anywhere to burn any calories, yeah, I yeah, would just yeah. sat at home eating everything in sight, eating pizzas every day, eating takeaway every night, because I've been dieting for my fight anyway, mm. so I wanted to gorge. Yeah, then yeah, I just yeah. carried on gorging, couldn't run. And by the time I seen everyone doing all these crazy runs and shit, I thought, right, this is me. <laughs> yeah. I put so much weight on me. I went out and did one 5K <laughs> run. My knees were fucked. I thought, what have I done to myself here? And I couldn't even get involved in it. But by that time, that's why I had to hire that treadmill. I had the treadmill to come in my living room. I started to do sprints on it because... I, my knees were just fucking killing me so much. It was my own fault though for putting all that weight on. But. Yeah, but that's the thing though, isn't it? With fighters, it's like we binge train. We have like some binge time. everything, mate. Yeah, you I, binge. I think it, I think it sort of like instigates or negates an addictive sort of personality. One hundred percent. So like like you know like you're you're training so hard and you're, and you're waiting for them burgers at the end. You yeah. know, like we always go out. We're for not going to have one burger. <laughs> <laughs> one burger. We're going to have all the burgers. Burgers. Yeah. The, the plural. Yeah. 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 I'll have all the burgers, mate. <laughs> Coming yeah. out for some burgers, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like I think it like it does. I think like a lot of Thai boxers. I know a lot of them take drugs and a mm. lot of them drink and a lot of um a lot of them do like I don't it's know. Not, there's a lot of, with exactly a lot of not just Thai boxing with fighters in general really. Yeah. yeah. Like what you were saying, then like there's, you get so pumped and stuff like that, training for a fight, and mm. it's like you're ready to erupt afterwards. Basically, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. you don't want to go out and have one drink. You'll have, you'll binge. You'll have twenty Jaeger bombs. You'll yeah, have ten you, pints. You sort of force on yourself. Yeah, you're like, you, you feel like want to do it. You try to balance it out, don't you? Like you go right. I've trained that hard, and I'm, I eat, I've eaten celery. Yeah. For <laughs> Nineteen weeks and just water, and then you, you sort of like try to balance out. You think right, I deserve this, and. But I always feel like shit though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like because, you know, especially after a fight, what I found after a fight, and I, I hadn't realized this 
until recently. After a fight, especially when you win, well, it is when you win. Yeah, when you yeah. win, you've got that high that nothing can ever, ever replace, ever. So you'll go out afterwards with your friends, like straight away, either the night of the fight, or as I've got older, it's usually the day after and stuff like that. And then you think, yeah, I'm so buzzing now. And you'll try to get yourself fucked up in a some yeah, like ridiculous yeah. state. Think like of celebrating, yeah. <laughs> but then on the Monday, you're so depressed and <laughs> because you've been so high. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. only one way to go and it's back down and drinking and the rest of it is not going to fucking help you wherever you are, do you know what I mean? True that. And only recently, like the last few fights I've had, I've not realised, I've, like, I've still, I've, I haven't gone out for a few days afterwards and even on the Sunday and the Monday, I've still had that high. Yeah, I've still no, been really. buzzing, I've kept the high and I thought, fuck me, over all these years, have I just been <laughs> ruining that high? <laughs> just going out and getting blasted out of my mind straight after the fight and stuff. And have I been ruining it? How many fights have you had? 115. And 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 about his last last couple of fights. Oh, you yeah. even found it. It had been a lot of trial and error, mate. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah. A lot of burgers got you. <laughs> a lot of a lot burgers of... and pints. Right, yeah. I want to come to it, mate. You're one of the best fighters England has ever produced. Cheers, mate. Everyone knows that. Um, one of the most naturally talented, the best person I've ever sparred without a doubt in this country. I want to, we'll start off early career because you fought Bukau, you fought Yod, you fought yeah, Zayok, yeah. you fought Kem, you fought every big name out there. You beat all the Europeans. You've even fought K1, even though that wasn't your favoured style, but you've done well in that. Fucking hate K1. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck K1. <laughs> you were here. Yeah. Um, right. Six years old when you started, mate, weren't you? And you've been with Richard from yeah, Bad Company. Yeah. For, what, how old are you now? For, 25 years, remember, 20 years, yeah, yeah. yeah. punches. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> how did you get into it? How did you start? You can be brief with this, mate, because I want to really touch on like your fights and stuff. Yeah. But you're just like, how did you get into Thai boxing, really? So I was just a little shit, basically. I was really energetic and like, like I was always, mum and dad, I was like a rough and tumble kid. I liked to play a fight and stuff. But um, I would just, I would just, I think I was just too hyperactive. And like my parents, I was just doing her heads in. <laughs> <laughs> so they tried taking me down, you know, Berman Toft and Leeds boxing. Yeah. They tried taking me down there, but I was six years old. I went, oh, it says, oh, he likes, he likes, you know, fighting and stuff and feel like he could, you know, waste some energy here and burn, you know, burn some, burn some energy and whatever. And uh, when I was too young, but the, the, they said there's a new Thai boxing place open down uh, in Heralds. That's when we were at the church then, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, never got, I, never, I never got to dream original. there. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they, 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 um, they um, yeah, they mentioned uh, Richard's gym and uh, my dad said, oh, we're going to go try some Thai boxing out. And I just thought it was Kung Fu because I've seen Danny Mitchell said it. And every, everything at that age, or every martial art was just Kung Fu to me yeah. at that age. Wait, well, do you remember that film, Three Ninjas? Yeah. When they were little kids. Yeah. Called, Three Ninja called Kids. Rocky. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, they, were little, they were little fat ones at sweets. <laughs> and I thought, I'm in me. And when I grow up, I'm going to be a ninja. So that's like, so. You're far off, mate. Yeah, to be I know. Honest. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, so, yeah, so I thought, right, I'm a ninja now. <laughs> I'll turn everybody at school, I'm a ninja. <laughs> What have you been I doing? Been in this new gym doing oh, nin ninjutsu. I used to make up stories. I said I'm not like 10 blokes. I was doing like that. <laughs> <laughs> just get them all in playground. And I'll say, yeah, I did this move. I did this move. <laughs> but yeah, I, just, I, did, but I, I went down and um, my, my dad took me and I think it were, it were a guy called Stanley Tudor who took the class mm. that night and um, we were doing knees. And I thought, oh, fucking knees are good, are they? <laughs> and I'm just kneeing his pad and I'm like, my dad could see how fucking happy I was. And, like, and just ever since then, I was like, I just, I don't know, I just, you, know, you fall in love with something straight away and it's something that's built for you, isn't it? Like, same when mm. you came, you just, it was made for you, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah. When, when I started, I think you'd been trained about five or six years by yeah. then, you had already just, like, obliterated the entire junior division, <laughs> even though you were, like, this big and just, like, a little round tyre. You just, just used to knock everyone. Yeah, I just body slammed them, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, I think there were you and there were Mark Lee and you, used to, you, you, were, you were, like, the best junior in the country yeah, when yeah. I started. Uh, me and Andy started at the same time. I think I was thirteen, and you didn't believe we were cousins. You thought we were lovers, didn't you? But yeah, yeah. We used to, we, <laughs> with these yeah, two lads yeah, in gym, yeah. who they're going out with each other. Yeah, then we too. thought we thought yeah, we thought <laughs> you were, you were mincing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, when I started, you were already like best junior in country, and I remember the first time I ever saw you fight properly. We're against John Dennis. John, I'm sorry about this, mate, because John's, John. John's a friend of ours <laughs> now. I remember Richard couldn't come. We, were at, uh, we won't say the guy's name because for certain reasons we don't want to mention him, but we were at a gym <laughs> and Richard couldn't come. He said, oh, can you give an Andy Corner? I'm like, I were on doing interclubs at the time, and I don't yeah, know what yeah. I'm fucking doing in Corner. <laughs> said, I don't know what to do. He said, oh, just give him a drink. He'll be all right. <laughs> and, we, and he caught his kicking round one and you picked him up so high. 
and you held him there for a bit, and then you like choke slammed him like Undertaker. Now I'm a move. <laughs> just slammed him on the floor, and it like took him a, a minute or two to come round. He was looking around, then he just burst into tears, <laughs> and he started crying. And uh, I remember thinking, "Fucking hell!" And I remember the first time I sparred you as well. I'm thinking, "Oh, he's, he's only little." And then you booted my legs to fucking pieces. Yeah, man, I was like, I have no respect for anybody about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that jumping, jumping fake punch, doing fake, fake kick and punch people. You used to know, tell me my shin pads were undone. You go, no, his shin pads are done. <laughs> yeah. I go, but now you punch me in the face. Mate, I fell for it every time. You're from East Leeds, you know that's sort of, You know, play them, them, them rules. <laughs> yeah, but you obviously had an amazing junior career, and then yeah, uh, into the adult ranks, you were fighting blokes from a young age and stuff as well. Yeah. How old were you when you first, you, you were 16, 17, your first like pro fight? I was 15, I think. 15. I, I fought that Danny, you fought him. <sighs> Danny Welsh. Danny yeah. Welsh. Oh, yeah, you were 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And he was an hard cunt. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. He was very, cunt. very good, Danny. Yeah, he was. Technically very good. And he, um, I just, do you know what? I wasn't ready for it. Mm. I like, the, do you know when you, when you go from junior? I was, about to, I was about to ask you about that. Did you find the transition difficult? Because obviously, like going straight from junior with no prep straight to an adult, were you still scoring like a junior, fighting like a junior? Because you had that one fight in Thailand when you were 10 or 11, and Richard came, you came out to corner and you yeah, said, lied to me. And Richard went, why aren't you punching him in the face? And you went, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. You didn't even know, did you? No, no did heck. I, I thought we were doing a free, free round in the club in some stadium in time. <laughs> I wanted to get a body pad, you know. <laughs> and you got in bare shit. Yeah. So basically you had your first pro fight when you were 11, or yeah, when yeah, you were 11. Yeah. So you, had, yeah. you fought full Thai rules in Thailand. At 11, even though you didn't know you could punch your elbow. <laughs> yeah, until third round. And <laughs> yeah. do you know in third round? I'm like this, woo! It's over. Yeah, what are you doing? doing? Yeah, combat to me. What are you doing? I went, but I'm, I'm one on <laughs> You got two more rounds, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, obviously you've come back to England. You fought junior for another three or four years before you got to adult. Did you yeah. find the transition difficult at first? Yeah, certainly. I think I found it quite difficult for a while, to be fair. Um, because, you know, like, and especially the old school style fighting like you see the kids now and they've always got them really tight Mate, guys the killers. They've got really nice style and stuff juniors it was more about just hitting where you could hit them yeah um hit, hit you know try and try and score as many points as possible and i don't think because i've been so so young six until like 15 when it's I, a long when time I, yeah it's like you, you you're already ingrained with the bad habits and like i saw i prepared but i wasn't you know, you never, yeah. you never can repair too much. And but I remember the first thing that happened, you came down and you had your hands down and he kicked yeah, you straight in the face. Yeah. <laughs> knocked me out yeah. first round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good, clean fun. Yeah, we're um, good. <laughs> yeah, so obviously that transition were a bit difficult, but once you got hold of it, then yeah. you were hold of it. Because I remember when you were about 16, 17, and you, me and you fought at Town Hall Show, and you fought Shivnan. And, and by that yeah, time, yeah. you'd managed to, all the skills from you, you were always a kicker. Obviously, your nickname, Quadzilla, et cetera. You were always yeah. an amazing kicker. Everyone always says the best kicker this country's ever seen and probably ever will see. That's and nice. that was when you really found your adulthood. Like you'd, you'd mixed the scales yeah. together. You had your adult style. You were getting, just getting strong and you literally just kicked him into submission. Yeah, I felt, I felt, I felt really good in that fight. I remember we were going on some crazy runs though, weren't we? Yeah. We were training <laughs> yeah. hard. We, we, we trained tra super hard for that fight. And I think that's, I think that's probably the hardest I'd ever trained like an adult coming up to a fight because you know, we were like, we were, we were running before. We were, we were doing like bloody half marathons and doing, then doing classes. We were, we were doing 10 miles and then coming back and doing the pads, yeah. sparring, then clinch after running 10 miles straight yeah. off and stuff. So that, that we, were, we were really fit. Felt fit. Who did you fight then? Did I you fought, fight the, I fought the, the French. Yeah, we kept rolling. Yeah, his well, and, he, and, he, and his grand guard rang yeah, out. Yeah, I thought, I'm going to fall out. I kept looking at it. I thought, these pubes are right. I don't <laughs> yeah. know what's going on. Mate, you were fit in that fight. Yeah, we were both were really fit, yeah, really. Yeah. And um, after that, we, me and you both went to Thailand, and that was when basically that was you were going from a boy to a man, wasn't Yeah, it? yeah. Not in that sense. <laughs> Maybe in that sense. <laughs> but you went there at 59 kilo. You fought Shivnan at 59 kilo. Yeah. We only went for three months. By the time you came back, you were fine at 65. You Man. just had a gross, too much rice. Whiskey. And rice. Rice. <laughs> and um, no, I'm jamming I'm cheeses then. Yeah. They were after that. Maybe. Whis whiskey's, whiskey's rice and a uh, pool. Yeah, <laughs> lots, pool, lots of pool. <laughs> but we went over to Thailand and this were a mad three months that we had there because as soon as we got there, <laughs> I think you fought straight away. I, and then I went to Japan and fought and you came over to Japan yeah. with me. Uh, uh, Masu Ma yeah, Masuda. Masuda, I, uh, yeah. I KO'd him in round two, but I bust my knuckle. Yeah, that? That big dog knuckle. Yeah, yeah. I KO'd <laughs> him in round two. You just fought before we went. You had a good win. We came back. 
And that, this is when you just had like four fights in about a month. Just went bam, bam, bam. Yeah, yeah. You fought twice in two days. So you fought at a stadium on TV live. Yep. Knocked him out first round. And then Jitty just went, right, you're fighting again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, mate. That's like, but like, you, you're ready for it then, aren't you? But in Thailand, like, you, you fight every day if, they, if, <laughs> if, if you're willing. Not. Yeah. But yeah, I remember I knocked, I knocked the guy out. Like, got him with a, yeah, got him with a shot in first round. And like, no, no, we were all right, and I look, but I can't remember a good, a good shot. And then, yeah, the next, the next day, the, it, we're up, we're up to the. Well, the, the Tokyo away, they didn't said right, we're gonna go up country. And yeah, then, man, I was scared. Yeah, Shit. well, he, we were a little tank, him, we fought in that one, but you knocked him guy, out. There were some guys threw him fucking AK forty seven <laughs> yeah. on the door. I'm like, am I fighting in here? You were like some yeah. fucking blood sport. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot myself under some little tin roof. Yeah. <laughs> chickens flying about and all that. But the Tokyo open, he were a tank, him. They said, oh, you yeah, fight, yeah. you fight him one of the best fighters from around this area, yeah. and that were a good war that fight. And then he yeah. ran for you with an elbow, didn't you? And you flatlined him. Yeah, yeah, but then. Yeah, they, had, they brought you back then. They said, yeah, right, man. you need to come back in two weeks <laughs> and fight his, his brother. Big, older, harder brother. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that fight, because that was mental. Yeah, so I thought, yeah, I'm fucking going to get this guy anyway. I'll beat his brother up. I can beat his older brother up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so like, we went into it. And I remember the first round, he caught me with an elbow, didn't he? Yeah. Like, we came out and, like, he ran in that same place again on that tin roof and that scary place. But I wasn't scared that time because, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd seen it and I'd been there. And um, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but there are, we'd bet a lot of money on this one as well, haven't we? Like, yeah. I'd, I'd like hundred thousand baht bet or something yeah. like that, which is like two, three grand or something. The pre- yeah, the pressure, the pressure we're on. But I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought I might have had it in bag. I will cocky then. Yeah, more cocky than yeah. Um, because because I, I beat I beat them two guys. I thought I'm on a good run. I'm gonna get this guy. And the first round caught me with a little, just tagged me with a little elbow, and he just he just dropped me. And after that, the fight. But what they did were though, they started giving you an eight count, got to two, because yeah. you bounced right back up, stopped and went, get him, get him, yeah, you know, him to get you. I, I think, yeah, we're up against it here. The red were definitely like that, yeah. <laughs> get him, do it. I was like, fucking hell, we're well up against yeah, it here. Won't we? Yeah. And it's, then it last round, I, t- I timed the last round because you battered him in round four. Yeah. And he was fucked on it. I'll probably come in back then, because after the first two rounds, it, 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 it got my number, he called me straight away, and then I worked my way back into the fight and I started beating him, I started sweeping him a few times. And uh, I got I scored some good points, and then round five, yeah, like it would just go in. I have a time in the round because yeah. I said, right, Jod, we're up against it here. You might need to drop him or something, but you were battering him anyway. And he was fucked. He couldn't even stand up. He was so tired, and you were battering him. And I was time in the round because I was gonna scream at you, yeah, but the last minute yeah. came up, and the bell went after ninety seconds, and I went, eh? The both that they've done us, they've done us over. They've done us over, didn't they? The swindled us. Damn it. <laughs> we are going to know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, but that was like just like mad experiences there. Yeah, like, I love which that. I was, I was talking to Dan McGowan about this, which a lot of like fighters these days, that they're being propelled straight onto the big shows like one and stuff, and they're not getting the chance to do all these crazy stuff and all these mad experiences and just fighting everywhere. And I think it's a shame we, in some cases, obviously not yep. because they're getting to build themselves a platform and they're getting everyone's getting to know them. But they're missing out on all this cool shit because this is cool life stories. Yeah. It's experience from when you fight as well on bigger shows. And it's just like, it's life experience as well as fight experience, stuff like this. And it's also, it's that unprepared sort of thing. So you don't even know where you're going. You're like some, you know, you're fighting at a big show, you know, you, you've got you got a certain amount of time to be there. Everything's in r- rules and structures and stuff. The stadium's there. The way is all good. When you go to these Thai places, Throw it right? back in van. Yeah, I mean, man. <laughs> get in van. You're <laughs> off to fight. Where are we off? Don't matter. Yeah, just <laughs> in a <the> field. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like, and you know, like it's you're, you're prepared. It's all teaches you to be prepared for not to, you know, to, to not like let things get to you then because, you know, like everything's so structured in these big shows and stuff now. But like sometimes someone comes out of the woodwork and like you, you go somewhere and you've seen the weigh-ins, don't they? When they just grab your arms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they go, <laughs> you're fighting this guy. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, they did that to you with Samoa, yeah, remember? Yeah, but, oh, that were another one. Was that on the same trip? It was the same yeah, trip, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Because you'd been to Samoa for your first fight, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah. Your first fight you went to Samoa and you just de- destroyed some kid. And then the next one, so you brought him back. You yeah. fought that giant who were about this Yeah, yeah that big tower lot of I'm, yeah. not, I'm not fighting him, I'm a duty win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really? I remember yeah. that because like, we were tra- I, was, I was watching someone who I thought were your size. I'm thinking, I said, oh, yeah, he's, not that good, he's not that good job, yeah. don't worry. And then he got in ring and he got in ring. I thought, fuck me. But then you knocked him out as well. Yeah, that yeah. Right? Because they brought you back to fight him so everyone could gamble because they thought he was going to beat you. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. You, you stopped him in round three I or four. I love that, though. That's yeah. class, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's beauty. Yeah. Again, that, that, 
these are them experiences that I wish every like fighter who's coming up through the ranks should have because that were a madden. You were getting pulled around all around Thailand so people could try and bet against you yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And Good, you're like yeah. a little prize horse, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the show pony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. look at this, so <laughs> brushing your hair when you're getting the game. Um, yeah, so we had that crazy three month in Thailand. We've got, got a lot of experience there. Uh, came back home. And then after that, actually, I remember another time in Thailand. I'd gone back to live there after that time. And when I went to live there, I remember you coming out yeah, there before. Yeah. And I was going to fight in Samui like three, four days just after you got there. And I remember we were going to go down. I was going to fight. We were going to have a little holiday. And as soon as you got to the gym, Jitty just went, Jordan, you're fighting when Liam fights. And you went, I'm not fit, Jitty. Oh. And he went, so? And you had to fight Sean Leck. Fucking hell, he's the right, he's the right hard as fuck. Like, yeah. Right? <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. He, um, You'd only been there three days. You I had, had to climb three months. You hadn't trained. <laughs> you had to have a fight. No, but, no, it must have been about six weeks I can't train for. I think we got back from Thailand that time. I just didn't train. <laughs> I'm like that, you know, I fall off the, uh, yeah. and um, yeah, I remember being in, yeah, I remember Ch Chon Leck and he's like, he's throwing head kicks at me and I thought, this guy's strong as shit. Hey, mate, he was a tank, he went he went on to fight in Glory, he fought on yeah. Fusion, he fought fucking on big, big shows. Nice guy. He went well. to Cal Samrit Jim Money from, uh, yeah. and then he moved to some way. Yeah, yeah, I rem yeah, and I remember I was like, I was that tired. Like, I just thought like, I couldn't keep my hands up. Yeah, I remember. I just thought like, I prayed to God. And I threw an head kick. <laughs> and he was like, yes. <laughs> it, honestly, yeah. it, like, it, it put him out. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this. Like in Thailand, a lot of time, when someone gets knocked out, they'll throw him on stretcher, they'll get out of the ring, then it back, they'll get up. I were in the back and they brought him in the back on a stretcher, put him down. I'd gone to the toilet, <laughs> washed my hands, came back, packed all his bag up. And I looked at him and he still had not moved. And I went... <laughs> I said, I said, I think so much wrong with this guy. I said, someone needs to come and look after this guy. And I looked at you and you were still just... <sighs> Man, I was still tired. Yeah. yeah. Bloody hell, I'm still recovering. I'm, <laughs> I remember because he got to like round three or four and I think he's fucking hell. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know how you're doing this. Yeah. Because we're in February. I remember when it was because I moved there in December and you came out in February. So obviously you'd had Christmas, got fat, drunk loads. And then just came out there, not acclimatized, still going to be jet lagged to fuck after three days. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. be getting made to fight someone like that. Oh, I don't know how you did that. That's one, that is one of the best wins you've probably ever had. Yeah, in no. all of them <laughs> circumstances, mate. I wish we had that video because it were amazing. That it's head somewhere, kick. isn't it? Someone yeah. love it. And you've had a lot of head kick KOs as well, because that one, yeah, you had a special move, that head kick. But that was definitely one of the best. Yeah. Felt good. Felt good. You know, and yeah, it just went just at the right time as well when I'm that tired. Yeah. Do you yeah. think it lasted? Yeah, come on, Tim. Come on. Please. Everything in this one. Yeah. All my energy. I've got 1% left. Yeah. It's going in this. <laughs> so uh, then after that, you've come back and then the chance to fight in the K1 UK arose. And it wasn't K1 UK fighters. It was like the K1 for Europe, which yeah. the winner was going to go to Japan for the big K1, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and I think there was you... And one other English guy. Then there was some friends. Harry Harry. Yeah, Harry Harry. I remember yeah. you fought him in one of the fights, didn't you? Yeah, I think you. Yeah, you, you, yeah, I think you fought him. I remember second you, fight. Yeah, and him. you kicked him up, but you were a tough bastard. But the thing is, in the final of that, you got to the final and you fought Sofiane Alouche, one of the hardest hitters fucking hell. I've ever seen. I remember I'd seen him fight three times before, and he knocked them all out in fucking first or second round. And then, but the, what happened in that tournament? You had two absolute wars, mm. one and both convincingly on points, but hard fights, weren't there? And then you got to him at final, who'd won two first round KOs. So he was fresh as a bit as he wanted. Mate, he were a big bastard as well. <laughs> yeah, he? he were massive. French Algerian, hard he, as fuck. I remember, I think he knocked Tim Thomas out or someone else at first round. Yeah, and he I, did. I, I remember him, I was stood at the ringside and I heard the shot hit his head or his chin or whatever it was. And it wouldn't, it won't like some fighters, when you hit him, it's like, pa, pa, pa. Mm. It went, doof. I remember thinking, fuck me. <laughs> and then he went out in his second fight. And he just did it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'd have two wars at this point. How, how did you? How the thing is, you're very good at tournaments. You've done quite a few through your career. How did you? How do you build yourself up to fight three times in one night like that? Don't know. I get I get better as I go on. Like yeah, you in, do. In, in my first fight, like even even a normal fight, like it takes me a few rounds to get into it because I, I get I get a lot of nervous energy and I feel like I expel too much energy because I'm not relaxing the first couple of rounds. But then when it's, it's the second to, uh, fight or the, the later rounds, I'm relaxed then and like. Things flow a little bit better, and I don't restrict myself as much. But the first fight, I fought some Spanish guy, and uh, just like okay, fight, teep me at lip and like split my lip first round. I don't think I had my gum shield in. <laughs> yeah, none of us used to wear it back then, did we? Why did we do that? <laughs> we'll get know. we'll get on to when we started it later on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> good reason behind that. Yeah. So I fought him, 
Uh, beat him quite convincingly, and then fighting Harvey Harrah, the second fight. Um, he was, I think, like a year, kickboxing European yeah, champion. Yeah, might have been a world it, champion, but he yeah. was a very good puncher. Yeah, but I, 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 were, I were in the floor then, and I felt like I couldn't be touched. And um, so I, I beat him um, quite convincingly too. And then third fight, I thought, and well, I, I did it about this guy, but I didn't really care. I didn't give a shit then. And um, like well, your finger is any though. You're only 19, and you'd only you want a proper 70 kilo fighter. Then you were still growing. Yeah, and you, yeah. You, you were like, I was, a, I was a bit, bit skinny. Yeah, bit you, were, skinny. you were just around the way, yeah, and so yeah. it were like, oh, Jordan's around 70 kilos. Get yeah. him in the tournament, wasn't yeah. it? But and then you blasted them two out, and then you're fighting him, who was fucking humongous, <laughs> who was clearly cutting from 80 kilos to come down. Yeah, had a 12 pack, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah. Had a one pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember it. I, I remember watching him, and I think like. It was like Cash the Flash Gill's retirement fight. It went Richard fought him at the same show and they brought that allow Alush in. And I think surely he meant to win your retirement fight. He just punched <laughs> Cash Gill's flight straight. He got in rings and punched his life straight yeah. out and then went to <laughs> later. And then went again. And I'd seen him a few times yeah. since that. And I'd never seen him not win by by knockout. So he was obviously gonna be a worry. But the first round, it was fucking yeah. you, you had him. I, 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 you I, had it, you were, you were, he weren't tagging you, you were kicking him up. But obviously after fighting six hard, well, seven hard rounds, he's had, he's fought three quarters of one round because he just knocked yeah, them man. both out. But the fair play to him though yeah. for being such a good puncher. But I remember fight, I remember when the fight and I felt like it's, it was it was strong, but it didn't have anything I couldn't really sort of handle until, you know, until he hit me on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> but like skills wise, I felt I felt good and I felt quite in control at certain points. And um, I felt like I'm making, making way and I thought, shit, I'm going to win this. And then I'd never been knocked out properly before. I've been I've been tagged and I've been I've been I've been sat on my bum, but I've never been like. Well, I've had I have never been asleep. No, I don't think I've ever been asleep. No, I don't think so. No. No. Um, Yo, that's your thing. You don't no, go that's down. That's the problem, though, isn't fucking, it? Yeah, it's a big problem. You don't have that rope and still try to fight. Good balance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's getting like, like I'm weeble you, things. You're too tough for your own good, mate. Yeah, I know. Tell that to my nose. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I remember him hitting me, and then. I remember like, you know, it's like someone's like spanned me around and then he's still hitting me, still hitting me. And then I, what, uh, ooh, a referee, what, John Blackledge. John Blackledge, maybe, yeah. He's come in, he's grabbed me and Andy's come in and 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 um, and um I've grabbed hold of him and I went, fucking Andy. I thought I got knocked out then. <laughs> <laughs> he went, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. But mate, like after that, I saw, I think I got a bit brain damaged after that fight. I saw <laughs> like, oh, well, maybe not, Maybe not brain damage, but I got really nervous. It's sort of affected my confidence, did that? It's going to do, like, the first yeah. time anyone gets, like, stopped like that. It's yeah. going to, like, play on the, the mind a little bit. Yeah. I, 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 I started stuttering a little bit after that. And, I've, and you know, you think you're in You know, until you get knocked out, you think you are indestructible. <laughs> yeah. You think, like, I get hit by a train. Yeah. And, like, I'll still be all right. I'll still be, I'll still be stood up. But, like, after the fight, it's sort of, like, stuff, hit, stuff hits home. And then, uh, yeah. But um, that, that's another thing. Coming back after, like, a knockout... And hats off to them fighters that come back and like you know when it's up against them and then they come back and then they smash it again. Well, it's it's a it's a hard comeback it, from, from getting knocked out. Hundred yeah. percent. Not just uh, any, not even a KO. Just any any sort of stoppage really. It's True. Like uh, it's because against Anawat when I got my leg blasted off, mm -hmm. I'm like I'm never going to be a tech look again. That's it. Maybe yeah. I'll stop. My legs are shit. I'm soft. I've got no bottle. <laughs> I've got so, fucked up. I'm so. It, it's hard <laughs> to come back from something like yeah. that and. Uh, the best feeling is when you do, and especially if you win or whatever. It's it's amazing because it's like yeah, yeah. The the rush you get from doing that, it's a, it's a very tough thing to do, and unless you're a fighter, you're never going to experience what that actually feels like. But talking about comebacks, yep. After the fight against Alouche and the K one thing, you had eighteen months to two years off. You went. You were in down in London plumbing with our good friend Les Goff. Shout, yes, out, yes, shout Les, out to Les. Yes, Les Goff. <laughs> Bez, Les, Des. <laughs> whatever, whatever he's calling himself these days. <laughs> shout out to Les. But yeah, you went down London a bit, did a bit of plumbing and stuff, yeah. and then you disappeared off the scene. Like you'd not really trained at all until the Contender started. And the first season of Contender, it had like John Wayne, Johnson Clay, and lots of other like big names in. And then you, they, you got offered to be in the second one. Yep. So they had a UK tournament. They got all the best fighters from England. And obviously at 70 kilos, I thought like, I just were actually at 72 kilos. Yeah, yeah. So your last fight were at 70 and then they said, right, we can't have a tournament about Jordan Watson. Get this guy <laughs> back. Get him back get from plumbing. Yeah, get him back from plumbing. So I remember me, you and Andy went to Thailand 
You, we trained in Thailand at Jitty Gym for that. Um, Andy at Lord Dustin got really poorly. Yeah. <laughs> what is Sam's sponsor? He got like, some weird sponsor. Yeah. He were in bed for two weeks, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got this new sponsor. Give me, give me all this sand. It's meant to be really good. Hemp sand doesn't matter what. Put in his drink. Put it all in his drink and then he were in bed for two weeks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went to Thailand. You trained really, really hard. You came back for the Contender UK. You fought Tim Thomas. You fought... Craig Jose, yep. you fought Chris Shaw, yep. three of the biggest names around that way in the UK, and you just did an absolute fucking job on them all after two years out. How did you get ready for that? Obviously, you are in Thailand, but mentally, after what had happened in the last tournament you fought in, in the final, how did it feel coming back to that? Were you nervous, or were you, did you just think, right, this is... Yeah, I think I think after that, I think I got a, little, a lot, got a little bit more nervous coming up to fights, and I, thought, and I knew a lot more riding on it, and I knew I won. I felt indestructible still, but sort of chinking my armor, you know, that I'd be, I'd be knocked out. So I thought it sort of hit home that like, I've got to be like, I've got, I've got to train harder. I've got to be stronger. I've got to be fit. I've got to improve. And we were training with people like Rajasak and, uh, what are Chai and people Wattara Wattara Chai yeah, yeah. And some, some sick guys, like ex three times, Lumpini, Rajadam and champions. And like that builds your confidence straight away when you train them guys and they give you like nods of approval, even though Rajasak nod of approval or an uppercut to it. Why are you needing pads? I mean, if Rajasak told you like, yeah. you know, 10% today. Oh dear, 10. Yeah, yeah, no. 5% better than yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Me, 100, you, <laughs> 10. <laughs> yeah, it's good. But yeah, but, um, but I thought it was, it was a new opportunity as well and I thought, right, oh, I'll get to go on this cool TV show if I win this and um, um, yeah, and then I ended up, I fought Tim Thomas in the first round and I knew Tim were a big puncher and um, Th that must have obviously played on your mind yeah. a little bit going from one massive puncher and getting stopped and then coming back to fighting Tim yeah. Tim's one of obviously if anyone doesn't know who Tim Thomas is he's one of the biggest punchers the UK has probably ever seen yep just had that, them solid hands in it yeah he's like sometimes a lot of times he threw it and he's quite effortless yeah he's just like well, just, a lot of times I'd see like he would lose he might be losing like quite convincingly and yeah. then boom one shot yeah you're always good at that one one eh? shot one kill yeah respect. yeah um, but then you, you also think that Sofian beat Beat him. I nearly beat Sofian. Yeah. Until he punched my <laughs> chin into next week. Um, but like, I felt like I had the skills. I had the skills to beat everybody in that tournament. It was more of a confidence thing. Um, first round, uh, fought Tim. And uh, I, I caught him with like a jab. And I'm never really confident with my hands, but I caught him with a jab. And like, his legs went a little bit. And uh, he really moved some big shots. And I thought, and they didn't really hurt. And um, so I thought, and after that, like first round, it's always my first round is always my killer round. It's my make or break. And um, fought him first, felt good. Second, fought Craig Jose. That, Fe would, that felt was really good. Fucking then. sublime what you did in that fight because again, Tim, massive puncher. Craig Jose is like a, a combination puncher. He's he's bam, 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 bam. Yeah, hard as fuck. One of the toughest fighters that our country's probably yeah. ever seen. And he'll, he, if you give him a chance, he'll fucking blitz you. He will just bam, bam, elbow. I remember when he knocked Michael, oh, well, he beat Michael Dix, but I think he dropped him a few times. Yeah. And he was like, bam, bam, bang, elbow, bam, bam, bang, body shot, bam, bam, bang. And he just, if you let him get in that rhythm, he won't stop. And what you did in that fight was very smart. You kept teeping his leg and then kicking him. And every time he stepped into punch, you'd teep his leg or sweep his ankle a little bit. And yeah. it, it, you're off balancing techniques in that fight that were beautiful. I just felt really confident in that fight. And like, once my confidence is up, I feel like, and I'm relaxed. I feel like I can take on like pretty much, you know, and, well, I can stand my own against anybody. And then, um, so I beat him and I'm much, I beat Craig Ozzy and I'm thinking, fucking hell, that's sick. The achievement in itself. I've, I've, you, beat the, yeah. you beat the two two of the favourites of the tournament yeah. straight away there. And I know that Chris, he had a hard fight with Daniel Hudson, Hudson yeah, and he yeah. had some like, they, they, they have, well, I think Hudson actually won. Yeah, yeah. But it was so mashed up <laughs> that it couldn't come out. So you nearly, nearly didn't have an opponent really because like Daniel said, "Oh, I can't, I can't fight," and then Chris went, well, "Fuck it, I'll fight." Yeah, he's in, yeah. fair play Scottish, for that. Yeah. He's hard as fuck. Yeah, he went in back. Had his mad dog twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, That's what he does after every fight. A book fast or whatever it is. That Mate, shit. I know. That shit, crazy, whatever it is, this week. <laughs> but he probably had a bottle of that. I said, "Right, I'll go back out." But then you just blasted him in yeah. first round. Can't How leg. did that feel after having eighteen months off and then fucking coming back and just doing that to free at best fighters? in the in the country at the time yeah it felt good I'm not gonna lie it felt good <laughs> it felt good um i just felt like you know confidence were back again and uh then that just propelled me a bit more forward then i got my you know your momentum so sometimes you lose your momentum don't you mm. and like it takes you a while to like to get it back and then once it starts snowballing you think like you're unstoppable again then until like i don't know until some until some upset that sort of like sort of sort of run but i felt like i were in a good good flow three fights in one night three three good people um so I'm ready for anything then. 
and then your confidence keeps going, doesn't it? And you just want to fight yeah. everybody then. Yeah. Well, after that, then you obviously made it to, to the, the house, the yeah. TV at your house. But that got postponed for like I mean, 18 months or two years. And in between that, your career just fucking went insane. You had a bigger challenge than in that house because you got offered book out. Yeah. And this isn't like the book out at now who's like 38 years old. This was about 10 years ago or 11. Might have been 10. No, it's longer. It's about 12 years ago, isn't 20, it? 20, I don't know. You 20 were about 21. Tw- you were 20, 21. Book yeah. out was about 26, 27 in his pump. He had just won yeah, the K1 Batman. twice. He was destroying any foreigner that he fought. He was in his prime. He was built like an absolute... F- he still is now, but yeah, like yeah, when yeah. you've seen his physique and stuff, then it was like something to be old. Like you see him at Wayne, and you're like, fucking hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that came around... Obviously, we'd started fighting on the MSA shows. Um, I think it was Dan Green, Matter Scan, and Sweet Lip who were putting these yeah, MSA yeah, shows yeah, together. Yeah, they were cool shows, weren't they? Yeah, really good shows. And I think you fought Stephen Meikle... And you blitzed him. And then they said, right, we'll bring you this Italian. Beat the Italian. You've got Bukau. <laughs> you've got Bukau. So, like, obviously, you've got Bukau in London. And I think this, this were, like, the first time Bukau had ever come to England. Everyone was fucking buzzing. Um, obviously, before that, I'm going to say, I, I talk about your prep for Bukau after. But obviously, before you had to fight this Italian. And this was at the time when our gym was the best gym in the country by a, by a mile probably in the best gym in Europe. Like, it's one of the same show when I fought Anna White, you fought the Italian, Andy were fighting Dean James. Yeah, there yeah. Was not many, we had, I think, Cadam was still around, Badger in his prime, David Mack, lots of world champions all together. Like, our gym then, you're saying like, oh, you felt unstoppable after your fights. Obviously in the gym working with like so many elite fighters around you. I've always said like, that's one, been one of the main keys to my success. I always having you, Badger, Andy, having Cadden, having David Mack, having even Matt Lee, when he was younger, man, you know I mean? he, he was such a sick guy, a great, great fighter. But we had such a good team around us at the time. So obviously, they've said, right, beat this Italian, then you've got Bucal. But they're really a stumbling block with the Italian. <laughs> I'll let you tell it. Go on. <laughs> so, fighting our M M M N M E N Arena, yeah, uh, Manchester, and um, fighting this uh, Gianluca Buccalario. Yeah. I'll never forget his name. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, so, you know, like, heard about him. Well, I didn't really know much about him. Um, just know, an Italian guy. I'm, I'm gonna, obviously, we're going to meet in the ring. So, um, first round, everything's going steady. You know, like, first round, like, Europeans are unpredictable. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. when you've been fighting Thailand, you go to Thailand, everybody's like, yeah, we're just like, nice and steady. But, like, I think I've thrown a, he'd thrown a left hook, and I leant back. All right, I'm going to go in and, Clinch him. <laughs> Worst thing I ever did. <laughs> I went to go grab him, but it came, it came back with a spinning elbow, knocked three of my teeth out. And I thought, fuck. Because <laughs> I didn't have my gum shield in. We didn't use, well, because my nose was smashed. Um, I, did, I couldn't really breathe through my, um, well, I couldn't breathe through yeah. it. So I thought, I'll take my gum shield out and I'll have a little bit more room in my mouth. And we never used to wear them, did we? No, never. And I think that was, yeah, we're silly. <laughs> Just looking back at <laughs> well, it. Well, oh, there were judges sat ringside and re- you've, one of your teeth went in near Richard and he picked it up from his pocket. Your other tooth went into his cup of tea. Yeah. The judge and he gave it to Richard and you somehow got, you got them all back in your hand after the fight. But yeah. after that, you blasted him, didn't you? Yeah, I came back to corner and went, you'll never believe it, Richard. Oh, and he's not my teeth out. He went, you fucking hear, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and and, then, and then, I don't know, were it Pelly Nathan or something? Yeah, yeah. He went, yeah, there's one ear as well and three of my teeth. But like, I yeah, remember so. Richard went, do you want to stop? And you went, fucking no. You nah, went knacked him not, and you stopped him that next round. Justice. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet <laughs> justice. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, so yeah, st- stopped him. Yeah, stopped him next round. But on, on, on anger alone. Yeah. That's how I won that fight. <laughs> I'll but, never you know, forget your interview after that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's if they interviewed me, why would they do that? But the thing is, we're going to get that interview. And what we're talking <laughs> about now, we're going to put it behind the <laughs> screen here so everyone oh, can see it. I'm going to find that interview and make sure it comes up on this screen because it I deserve fucking, that. It was the <laughs> best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 Get your teeth 
went to hospital, you, they put you like the yeah, glue in the back in with chocolate spread in yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> You put your teeth back in really badly, and you, I kept thinking, I said, "Jod, I'm fighting. I don't want you need to be here, mate." I said, "I can't. You need to be in mate, the corner." Yeah, mate. And he went, "Trust me, I'll be back." And we're only like five fights. And you came back. I want to miss that. <laughs> you came back <laughs> and your fucking teeth were all like stuck in your mouth. I went, that's not Jordan. I said, who's this guy coming in corner? I could have eaten apple through a fence, mate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, your teeth got sort of like put back in. And then after that, you had about, I think, three, four months of May, one, eight, three months to get ready for the biggest fight yeah. of your career against the biggest known tie on the planet. How did that feel? Thinking, right, I'm going to fucking fight him with Bukau now. Obviously, by then, you had had so many good wins since that. Yeah. Uh, since you lost to a loose, you'd beat him on the tournament. And then, to be fair, you'd just been splattering everyone who'd been putting you away. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I've just been taking fights and, like, not really thinking about them. And I, and still, when when, when, I got, when I got the fight for Bukau, I didn't really think about it. Because, you know, thinking's a killer, in it? Yeah. You overthink anything. I, and say like, that, I say that about anything. The worst thing a fighter can do is think. Yeah. And just, thinking, just react. And thinking's time, isn't it? Yeah. Like when just you're, react. Even when you're in a ring and you're thinking, that's costing you time. Yeah. You've got, yeah. I, I say it about a fight. When you're in the middle of a fight, the worst thing a fighter can do is think. All your thinking should have been done in the gym, in yep. training, in the fighting. It should just be reacting. That's why Re- you've got to drill stuff, though, don't you? Because if yeah. you don't practice it enough, it doesn't become natural. And exactly. You, you end up thinking, you end up getting hurt. Don't that's you? why your fighters don't spar enough and stuff. And I've done it myself. I've yeah, lost yeah. fights because they aren't sparred enough, either whether it's been through injuries or whatever. Mm. If you can't spar, you shouldn't be able to fight, I believe, because sparring is so important true to that. how you react to shots. True that, true that. Um, yeah, and um, so, yeah, so I had the Bukau fight and I thought, just, and uh, Red Sack was training from the court. Red? I think so. Yeah. One of the ties were over. When yeah. We had a tie, because we always had ties over in his gym at the time. Oh, Chanoi it was. Ah, Chanoi yeah. were in the gym, one Chanoi, who, who yeah, beat yeah. Raymond Decker. Yeah, yeah. yeah Chanoi yeah. were over at that time. Of course he were. Um, yeah, and like, like I, want, I, want, I didn't really, it was just, I was taking it as another fight, um, but I sort of knew deep down it's like this is like this is the best fighter in in my weight category and like probably one of the best fighters ever lived. Um, but I wasn't really scared, you know. Like I wasn't really, I want, I want, I was, I was more excited to do it and more just glad to even get the opportunity to fight someone as amazing as this guy. He's like the spectacle to behold, on it. Mm. Um, and yeah, um, trained hard for it. Got to the fight and um, everything had gone all right. Yeah, for everything had gone well. Like um, weighed in, weight weighing had gone fine and stuff. Um, and then we, we, I met him in the ring, and I remember before I came out to that Eminem song, um, to the lights go up. Yeah, yeah. And like I never felt a feeling like it, and I thought he's on his bigger in Emmy. And we had like uh, sorry, fucking the packed out O two one O two in, in London. Emmy. Everyone fucking yeah. cheering for you. Obviously, everyone cheered for him as well because we never had a superstar like yeah. fucking him coming over and everyone were buzzing about it, but everyone on the feet for you. I remember that entrance, it was fucking brilliant. Yeah, it felt good, felt good. And it felt, it just felt, it just felt good to be part of that. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the first like two, three rounds, you know, uh, that, 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 you that, hurt him. Yeah, I hurt him with some good. And I, and you I, and kicked I, his legs to fuck, and I don't think he was ready for it. I swept him a few yeah, times. Yeah, you did. And I, and you kept like, teeping his leg and then booting his leg, and you kept when he was trying to block, you kept going right underneath and threw him and straight into his other leg, mm. and you were taking him out of his rhythm, and he didn't like it. Yeah. But Bukau, being Bukau, they've always got another gear these times. Yeah, they've always got like, they've always got that just a little extra, little, little, little extra sick. You know, they've got the fifth gear and they've got the little extra hidden gear. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it's like always, a cheat. They can always turn it on, Carla, and they're, they're good at keeping the poker face as well. So, like, I know, I, I know, it upset him the first few rounds, but um, he can't move a body shot in the fourth round. Um, and I remember, and then that, that and that, that was the end of the, the fight. Body shot you in and knees you straight after, didn't yeah. you? Like, yeah. I remember you. You got a ring, and you you were looking at me eyes. You fucking growl it out now, John. <laughs> <laughs> growl it out. I'm like, yes, okay. <laughs> I'm like, rah, you know, like trying to get it out, and it were hurting and that lot. And you were you were fucking spurring me on. You saying, come on, fucking this last round and that. Growl that shit out. Fucking get it, get in. And like, I was riled up for it. Um, but it was a good fight. But you know, a great fight at, yeah. that, at that point. Yeah. When he were in his prime, fight. like that, there weren't many. People who push, especially under Muay Thai, there were no Westerner who'd push him like that. Yeah. Maybe a bit K1 because he couldn't use all his main weapons in K1, even though he was a great K1 yeah. fighter, he won the match and that. But like, in fighting him in Muay Thai, which he fucking specialised that, and to do that with him yeah. and to fucking push him to the wire. Yeah. I remember when the final bell went, as soon as the final bell went and he took that pay- poker face off that you were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he limped over to our corner and he went, oh, he hurt me. <laughs> and he limped, he was limping straight Sorry, away dude. after the fight. Yeah. And like going back to that poker face, I don't get how the fucking ties do that. To be so fucking calm, 
not show any emotion whatsoever. As soon as the bell went, he started limping, like literally straight away. So to ha be hiding that, it just shows experience, levels. I seen it with Sanchai, with you and Sanchai won when you fought him in Manchester. And because um, he was hiding how tired he was. And I remember him and he um, he looked so, you know, like cool and um, calm, collected. But I remember you had him in the clinch at one point and he just and he did went, <gasps> took a yeah. super deep breath. <laughs> I'm like, Sneaky. He's actually tired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that, but the tires are good at that. I think they must trick the, I think that must be like just training with each other throughout and throughout the, uh, you know, in the gyms and stuff. They must learn that, um, that, that poker face. It just it. comes with having hundreds of fights and experience True. and stuff, doesn't it, it really? Because obviously Bukal's had about 300 fights. Sanchez had about 300 yeah. fights. It just comes with this, the fighting so regular, like it's just it, part of it. It's a good move it? to have your arsenal, isn't it? Like a good, sorry, a good skill to have your arsenal, um, yeah. being able to keep that poker face and stay calm. Exactly. Collected. So yeah. after the Bukal fight, this then fucking propelled your career uh, massively. You've then ended up fighting Jodson Clay not long after, and Zayok not long after that. Both of them, you you didn't fight him in Europe. You fought that both of them guys in yeah, yeah. Thailand as well. Uh, you fought Jod on the the Kings Cup in Bangkok, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good fight. It was a great, again, another yeah. great fight. And yeah. I won't ever forget this as well because your teeth <laughs> were still wobbly. And you came back after round two and I went to take your gum shield out and you went, don't. I went, <laughs> I went why? You went, my teeth are in them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he with an elbow, didn't he, in round two? Yeah. But again, yeah. that was a, a great fight. You'd beat Antoine Pinto in the first round. Yep. I think you had uh, beat Rick Colossa or someone like that. He just smacked them all over the place. And then you two didn't have to go at it. Uh, Yod went on to, to win the tournament, but that, that who talk us through fighting Yod first, and then I want you, I want to, who was the harder one to fight? Obviously, it was a bit different circumstances fighting yeah. Yod in the tournament and that, but who, 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 who hurt you more? Who was more solid? Who, who did you find more tricky to work out? I found it easier to fight Yod. I yeah, think I'm, I he's think a bit I'm, more basic and he's just yeah. that fucking solid beast powerhouse. His, 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 his timing is like on his on his left kick, like he's he's, he's perfect. So mm -hmm. like he get you just off balance. But um, I think the hard the hardest fight was Monster Munch. <laughs> yeah. What were you called again? Egg Pratcher. Egg Pratcher, oh, man, man. That guy is. Well, you remember what he did on scales? He, yeah, he got yeah. scales with like one leg on and stuff. Went no, get him on properly, and he was yeah, still mate. overweight. Yeah, mate. And then you just got mad and went, "Fuck it, I don't mm. care." Yeah, um, but like, but mm, there were hard fights. But you know what? I, I think I've had hard fights. Mm. Um, like I think, I think like Europeans are harder to fight than Thais. Hundred percent, mate. One hundred percent because they they don't give a fuck. Yeah, there's no way. There's no feeling out process. Yeah, they're always trying to punch your lights out. Yeah, they do weird shit that hits you from crazy angles, mate. Yeah, they are spinning elbows first yeah. round. <laughs> yeah. Ten seconds of first round, just spinning elbows like teeth out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, like with at least with ties, at least that they'll try and fill yeah. you out and stuff like. That. And don't get me wrong, they're amazing at what they do, but they, they only a lot of them. The majority of them will only fight you hard for three and four. Yeah, and, uh, they'll, and they'll get the win as well. Like a lot of times, they won't. Like you know, Europeans they're like going to try and kill you as yeah. well. Yeah, like ties will <laughs> steal the win off you. Yes, true. They'll let it go down a wire and they'll think, right, I just need to do something now. In yeah, they can yeah. win a fight in twenty seconds. Ties. True. They can leave it, leave it, leave it. Do something amazing for twenty seconds. No, they've won. Go on the back yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah. Score points and then, yeah. So anyway, who were the hardest? Bukal. Yeah, that was the question. What? Who, 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 who were the hardest to fight? Did you think? I think Bukal. Yeah. Yeah. Just for just for speed. Speed and he was very versatile. He, like Yod, mm. he had the big left hand, the big elbow, the right uppercut and the left kick. Bukal had the skip kick. He had a great teep. He yep. could clinch. He could elbow. He had a disgusting low kick. He had so many good weapons. His clinch were really good as yeah. well. Like, even though he'd been fighting K1 for so long, like he's got that, it can, it can turn, it can turn yeah. so good. He, yeah. um, before he used to do that, I remember when he was watching him fight the Westerners and he literally threw them all that up. That was his thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Like breaking it up, like, because then he couldn't clinch in the K1. So he used to just, just throw them off move him. Them. Yeah, move them. Yeah, and disbalance them and then, like, yeah, capitalize. You also, uh, after these crazy fights, you fought uh, Kem as well. Where did he rank up? Where were them guys? Because I thought you might have nicked the, nicked the decision on that Kem fight. Yeah. That yeah. only three rounder on your count, yeah, that, that, that could have gone either way, that one. Yeah, we well, were drawing end, wasn't it? Cut me. Mm. Um, yeah, Kemmer. Yeah, Kem, Kem, another good fighter. Re, uh, preci very precise with his elbows. Um, but yeah, he was renowned for that. He, I, I think he stopped Toby Smith with elbows and that. Yeah, like, yeah, because I remember he did cut you on your head, didn't he? Bit of, a, bit of a sniper when it came to when it came to his elbows. But um, no, no one. I felt like I, could, I felt like I could push. I could push on him a little bit, and um, 
he used his movement a little bit more, but um, I felt like still Ekpacher. Yeah, Ekpacher. mate, that were a fucking gruel, grueling. Yeah. And the thing is about that, we 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 just mentioned then that he, he didn't make weight. We were at the weigh-in and he was stood on the scales and he kept doing all this stuff on one leg. And we were yeah, shouting him saying, saying, put you like David Blaine. Yeah, yeah, well, Shazam. Like, Damn, Jacob Card. Damn. <laughs> 70 kilos, Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> But he would literally he wouldn't stand on yeah. scales properly and he was still overweight. Yeah. And then he went and put the sweatsuit on. I remember the like, swimming pool outside, wasn't there? He like walked around it a few times, came and stood back on it, he wasn't even sweating, and then did this again. And then I remember he was getting mad, going, Fuck off, it don't matter, it don't matter, we'll just fight, we'll just fight. And then when he turned up next day, I remember you got him ring, I looked at him, I went, I went to Jay, I went, yeah. Look at the fucking size of him. Like jolly green giant. Yeah. One, yeah. <laughs> I said, he's yeah. massive. And Jay went, Yes, yeah, because he didn't make weight. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but, yeah, wow, he's big. But that was another another good fight. I think his size just told in about round four, wasn't he, when he started. So strong. Yeah. He, so strong. But, like, the first three rounds were even, and then when he started, like, pushing, he was yeah. so big as well. But that's 72 as well, that one. 72 point. Yeah, 72 or 72 Exactly. Point five, yeah. And, yeah, your best weight were always 71, yeah, really. Yeah, But, yeah, he was, he was fucking huge. Yeah, talk us through that fight, man, because that, that were a grueler. Yeah, well, I'd been in a... I'd been in Thailand, I think, about three weeks. We, we trained for a few, yeah. for a few weeks, and then... Um, I remember you and Badger talking about Monster Munch. Yeah. This guy, he was because he was, he was destroying people, yeah, just eating them alive, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And um, and then Jitty went, "Oh yeah, you're fighting this Ekpa Chow." We're like, Monster Munch, and the Monster Munch <laughs> man. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." So um, we did, they had we had the way and stuff. And he didn't make a way, but you know, what I mean, I'm not bothered. You know, like a lot of times, like I've, I've like I've let people off and stuff, and it's like it's one of them. You're there to fight, aren't you? Yeah, and. Um, you can start nitpicking and all that, but end of the day, you know what I mean? You're going to be fighting, aren't you? So, yeah. so um, yeah. Um, yeah, a good fight with him, but like really strong, just all you around. Were freakishly really strong. Really right, you know, like heavy and like, and like, I felt like, you know, like you feel like, you know, pushing up against someone the whole time. Like he was like a big weight, just like pushing on me. So he got me, he, he was really good at like taking your energy, mm. zapping your strength. But that, that was another good battle. Like, yeah, it was, it was great, it was a great yeah. fight. The only yeah. th- it was just like he got a, in round four when he started like pushing a bit too much. It was just it was, again, it were only yeah. even, and then they do that little bit extra, mm. that I little bit I, more. I that's why I lost out with the tires. Like they always like the gear. I, I um, I never, I never, I, 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 I was never disciplined in my um, you know, when I was starting rounds. I because I, I always I felt like a junior. Mm. I'd st- I, like a lot of times I start quite fast, um, one, two, and three. And then maybe not leave myself enough in the like rounds four and five, whereas the tires they do the opposite way around. Yeah, they're the masters of it. But that's 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 that's. They like suck yeah. you in. They like let you think you're yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah, And then they just knock you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, uh, yeah. I did Hustle, it with yeah. I did it with Singdam. I was like, wow, I'm battering him. I'm like, I'm so sure I am going to stop this guy. How didn't his leg actually I fall don't, off? I don't know. I sat down after round one. I went. I said, I've hurt his leg. Sat down after round two, I went, going to stop him next round. Yep. Sat down after round three, I went, I will definitely stop <laughs> him this round. I got battered all over the ring. I got battered all over that fucking all arena round four. And I sat down and went, I fucked. <laughs> I can't stop him. I can't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> and then round five, I got a bit battered, but I did all right. But that's, again, what you came, you're saying there. It's about that, the gear change and just having that. It's a good thing to learn, I think. It is, to be fair. I've been, been practicing that on my runs, actually. Because you know um, these hill, I'm doing these uh, three peaks hill running thing on Saturday, and um, like the hills are long. You know, you start too hard, and then you end up just using willpower all the way up. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm that, that I think that's the thing with runners. You got to start slow, work your way up two percent, three percent, four percent, and always finish strong on the hill. Never chest, never checkers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, never start, never, never start too strong. Don't, don't put all your cards on the table. Keep, you know, keep some to your chest sometimes. There's a good analogy. So, you've had all these crazy fights against all these these ties. Uh, towards the back end of your, your fighting now, you've you started, like, getting offered got a good money to fight K1 and stuff. Mm. Um, you obviously fought Enrico Kell and you fought Petrosian, like, two of the biggest names in K1. Yeah, yeah. And just to say that you don't even really fight K1, you only had a few fights here and there of K1 just yeah. to get thrown in, like, with those guys. What did you have to do to try and, like, change up your, your game plan? Especially for Petrosian, the greatest K1 fighter of all time. I didn't yeah, think it's not... He, um, he's, Without having much K1 experience, it's insane to just say you go in there. And again, that were another fight where the first two rounds, like, fucking hell could win here and then again he did that thing in round three where fucking he just 
turned it on for Trojan style, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. He, he were he were a good he's good he's good on counter. Yeah. And like textbook counter puncher. Um, well, whatever. Whenever you watch him, he never does anything flashy, or he's mm. just so good at the 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 basics and what you need to do, and then little subtle footwork movements. Very efficient, and that. efficient, yeah, yeah, efficiency, yeah, yeah. He is. It, it's perfect. Respect. A lot of the stuff that he does, yeah, it really is. And he were like, he's, he's done his he'd done his homework. He knew I'm I'm a, I'm a kicker in a K one fight, and and he were countering with him at the left. And mate, I'm I'm. Amount of southpaws I've I've, I've got like <laughs> six southpaws in a row, one. and I have a right kicker and a left hand and a right kicker. Just, yeah. That's uh, don't go together. I'm a Sunny Dalbeck smash my nose. <laughs> Good looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but um, for Trojan fight, yeah, that were. Um, I, do you know what? I'm not gonna lie, I can't really remember much. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> but yeah, um, great, great counter puncher, very efficient, amazing footwork, um, and do you know. You know, like when you hit the pads quite effortlessly, but they've got that nice foot and you don't really yeah. try that much. He's got that sort of power. You know, when it's not like it, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not putting everything into it, but he's just got that pa, effort, pa, effortless pa, presence. Yeah. That's yeah, got a lot of respect for him for that. Is that he's so calm and so I don't know, so smooth during the fight? It's the subtle stuff that I know. I remember I commentated on one of his fights and I was sat ringside and I was just watching the subtle stuff he did, he does with his feet. Yeah, I remember thinking, then I'm thinking, wow, I thought that like it was just like the guy would try to hit him. And he'd move his feet about that much, and it'd make the punch move, miss by that mm. much. And I'm thinking, wow, this guy's a fucking genius. Yeah, yeah. Because to do that in K1, where everyone's just swinging all over at you, because yeah, in K1, K1 is, is like it's the just, hardest cunt wins in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. If you're hard as fuck, you yeah. win. I don't see fit. Yeah, but for him to, he's always got everyone's number. He never looks like he's having to get out of first or second gear. He's always smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what you just said. He's efficient. He doesn't waste. He won't, he won't throw a shot unless he knows. And if he wants to hit you on the chin, he will hit you on the chin. If he wants to kick you right on the top of that fucking yeah. fight on where all your nerves are from that southpaw thing, if he wants to hit you in that spot, he will do it. Won't he? But do you know what? He's, he's had a hard life on it. I've heard, mm. I've, heard, I've heard he's had like a hard yeah, life. Armenian, so like yeah. Armenian, and they had like the, the war and stuff like that. And I heard he used to like just get up on the morning, train himself, running around the park with a tire on his back and stuff. So like, like you say, when you do all that stuff, coming of age and like experience and it all, it all comes into part and parcel at the end, doesn't it? Yeah, and like make sure you are. So like, yeah. Well, obviously he just won that uh, the million dollars on the the, the glory uh, the one championship tournament as well. So that's obviously you were already with the the greatest K one fighter of all time. But yeah. then to top his, he's at the back end of his career now. He's about similar age to me, thirty four, thirty five. But yeah. when you're still winning million dollar tournaments at thirty five, oh, you know the the baddest motherfucker on the planet. But I've, I've seen some of the fights coming up on the uh, on the one. Oh, it's some amazing ones. All them ties at the minute. Like, cause well, the, 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 like, the ties never used to really, like, it, it, a lot of times it was like Thailand versus the rest of the world. Wasn't yeah. It? But, like, now, like, exactly. There's, there's some of the, some of the ta- like, the Yod's, co- Yod's coming back. Who was he fighting? Fight Pitch Morocco, who fucking blew my wig off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll be agree. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be a good fight. Yeah. Uh, there's Rod Tang versus Pitch Dam, Superlek versus Pampayak. Medi Zatut versus the little pint of Victor. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's going to be a sick fight because they're both very similar style. I like Victor. Yeah. yeah. Mate, he's, you know what? He's a nice kid as well, Victor. And yeah, he's, yeah. He's, a re- he's Muay Thai. I don't know why he's fighting K1, though, because he is so slick yeah, at Muay Thai. Thai. always sick. Mate, he's sick. Yeah. He put a video up of himself the other day and it was like a Thai try to kick him and he leant back and then somehow swept him before he even put his leg down and then walked off without even looking at him and then like brushed his hair back in the <laughs> the coolest thing I've ever seen. I even, yeah, I even yeah. shared it on my page. But yeah, them, uh, I think what's happening as well though, the minute, obviously not many people can get into Asia with all the quarantining and stuff like that. Yeah. And not many people at all can get into Thailand. So I think what one have had to do is they've got that to like look for the country where most of their athletes are. And put on a show there, so now the ties have got to fight the ties. Also in the country, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure Fabio Pink is on that show making his MMA debut. Really, I may be wrong, but he I'm keeps, excited to see that. Oh mate, if he, the thing is, he's been working grappling for quite a while now. And with his stand up, I honestly believe anyone in that fucking division, whether you can wrestle or not, unless he fights like a jujitsu ninja straight away, <laughs> whoever he fights is in big trouble, mate, because none of them MMA guys are there to stand up with him. Uh, they'll, have to, they'll have to take him straight down, but it looks like he's Where's been... Where's he been? He's been... Well, obviously, he's Jim in Leon. He's had MMA there for a while. His gym is, like, open. He's got boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So he's been working it there. I've seen it on his Instagram. But he's been in Tiger Muay Thai for the last... 
God knows how long. Right. He was locked down there with, he was being locked down with other MMA so guys. He's been in boot camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> it, it looks to me like he's, he's just been on it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. If yeah, it happens, yeah. don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure it looks like it that's, is. That's one I'd definitely like to see. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, but like he said, he said, I've done everything in Thai, in Thai boxing, looking for a new challenge, and that's... Let me come run, run for your peaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, obviously you've done all yeah. these fights, you fought Petrosian. The last, your last fight, because this is fucking insanity. It is, you think you've heard anything crazy now, wait till you wear this. Your last fight you fought... Giorgio's brother Armin. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. And how, how you got cleared to fight here? I have, will never have no idea. But you fought him, and you were basically on your fucking deathbed. You had sepsis, didn't you? You had blood poisoning, and I you. Were, I just had a, a you were about to literally <laughs> die. You ended up in fucking hospital for out three weeks after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in hospital for three weeks. You were literally on your deathbed. Or didn't you go on? treadmill to make weight for the fight and you lost four kilo in 20 minutes or something stupid because you yeah. were that for your blood pressure with that eye or whatever yeah well i um i i think it, it was the day before the weigh-in i'd started doing a bit of stretching you know um i'd, I'd, I'd just been doing a bit of stretching at room craven was just chilling we were sat in his hotel room i thought right i'll stretch out and then uh, i remember like stretching my like uh you know just my, my 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 lats out and then i felt like a little like i pulled a muscle um but I didn't really think out of it at the time. And then the next day I woke up, I felt a bit warm, my nose felt a bit hot. But you know, sometimes when you're making weight, you feel a bit run yeah, down, Yeah, you, don't you, you feel a bit hot all the time, don't you, really, when you're making weight. That's why you, you want, like, cold showers on you, trying to yeah, cool your body yeah. down because you've been sweating a lot and stuff like that. Well, um, so I, I'm making weight. I'm, I'm uh, running on a treadmill, and, and, I, and I think I had, like, I think I had, like, three and a half or something to lose, maybe maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, and... Um, um, this muscle started getting a bit, you know, a bit tighter. But then I got in sauna, ten minutes, put sweatsuit on. Then I got on treadmill, and I lost like fucking all that weight, like three and a half kilos, something like, but like I don't know, an hour or something like that. I didn't think of it, but then I'd weighed in. Then you weighing two kilo under? A little, yeah, a little bit <laughs> under, a little bit under. <laughs> um, and um, I weighed in, and then. Do you know, like I could get my appetite back, and I started feeling really hot. I started feeling a bit shivery and stuff. So I had a little bit, a little bit of pasta, and I think I got back up to I'll find it seventy, and I got back up to like seventy one and a half, and I couldn't <sighs> get any further yeah. than that. And I like, I just kept feeling really. Did you usually go at seventy five, seventy six? Yeah. When you wish, yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah. Fucking hell. When when I when I when I've been big before, I've been <laughs> like just eighty or something before. <laughs> but um, but yeah um. Just felt a bit run down and not a lot. I, I, I think on the day of the fight, I managed to. The only thing I could eat was a bit of ice cream, and then um, I started feeling really f- like just like you know, I thought oh, I must have a flu or something or a cold. But I thought fuck it. I've been in Phuket. I've trained hard as fuck. Yeah. I've been running fucking this Kamala run, which is a fucking like, <laughs> up all that mountains yeah, and it's shit. It's fucking crazy. Uh, I'll be training at the Revolution Gym in uh, Phuket, mm. and they were doing some sick runs and we're doing some sick training and we were training. I was training hard and I was ready. But I thought if I'm sick, I don't give a shit. I'm fighting no matter what. Um, and it's got to the we got we're going to the show. I started getting cold and stuff, and I'm laying on the floor because I can't like I'm just trying. I thought I'll just sleep. I'll just sleep before before the fight. I I, I couldn't really get any fluids down me, and then um, and then um, who came in? What the Polish man? Which one? Oh, the mountain gears got to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um. So I've, he's giving me some herbs and that lot to help revitalize me and stuff and like give me like some coffees and stuff. But I'm shaking, I'm shivering on the floor, but I thought, fuck it, I'm fighting. Don't give a shit. Got in ring, I felt weak as a kitten. And he's like, he's hit me. A gust of wind could have knocked me out, honestly. <laughs> he's hit me with like a, he's like, like a left hook, fair play to him, great shot. But he wasn't really that hard, you know what I mean? And I was like, I was out. And then uh, got back to the hotel and I couldn't breathe then. And like, I didn't realize that my lung had started filling up with fluid and I had fucking pneumonia. I didn't really know. <laughs> so I've got the doctors in the hotels giving me some paracetamols. I managed to, I'm, I'm literally like, <gasps> yeah, well, Joe, out. Joe messaged yeah. me. I was in Thailand at the time training to fight yeah. Rodlick. He said, mate, I don't know what to do. I said, he held the phone next to your face and he recorded what you were doing because you were going <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that. I said, fucking hell, mate. I said, ring an ambulance. But he said, then you, when you woke up, you came around a little bit again. And then you somehow made it back home, didn't you? Because this were in Mil- were the fight in Milan. Yeah, fight fight in Milan, and uh, oh yeah, my my knee is, my knee was aching. That was the, that was the, that was like that that hurt more like in my bone. And then uh, managed anyway, managed to get home, and I've said to our lass, I've, I've gone off to the hospital. 
we've gone to hospital and I think it's been like it was like I don't know, it was on some like bank holiday or something had been so it was full of piss heads, smack heads and fucking police and shit like that. But I'm ill and I'm like, I still really want to be here. They give me some paracetamol. I said, Oh, you might have a blood infection. So I went sound, give me some paracetamols. And I felt better then. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll do this at home. Yeah. No problem. I said, oh, I signed myself out like a dickhead. <laughs> got home. Typical Watson. Oh, got home. <laughs> An hour later, I like, was Who's it? I can't go back. I went back to I was like, please, can I come back? <laughs> I didn't mean to leave. <laughs> and then they checked me out and like, they thought they didn't know really what was wrong with me. But what had happened is I'd picked up staph bacteria um, in Thailand picked up staph bacteria and that's got inside my blood. Um, must be like through a mosquito bite or something. And I think when I've been run down, making weight, it's, it's I don't know, it's, it's, it's managed to cause sepsis and got pneumonia, fucking nearly did me in. But, um, <laughs> it did, it literally yeah, nearly yeah, died. Yeah, and, and that, Three and weeks in fucking, in hospital. Three, yeah, three weeks. a long time to be. And I just felt, I was I was weak and, and, and do you know what, that, that on my, um, I felt like, that on my like sort of, because before that I'd been injured like quite a bit. I brought my hand, brought me, I uh, fractured my ankle and like my, my career was stop and start, stop and start. Then I thought, right, this is the one. I'm going to go to Thailand, train hard as fuck. I'm going to beat freaking, I'm going to beat this guy and I'm going to get back on scene mm. and, you know, get back, get my momentum flowing again. But then that sort of like the, the fucking, the infection or whatever I got, that sort of like put, put it on the back burner then. And then I just like, I don't know, like I remember I've been in the hospital and I thought, right, I'm going to start training again now. And I did seven press ups. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my arms started coming. I went, no, what's happened? Did seven press ups. But then, yeah, but then I couldn't really train for a while then because I'm out. I, I still feel it now. My lungs still a bit like, I still feel the pain. They expand a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah so I do like loads of breathing exercise and stuff. But um, um, yeah, but I'm meant to get seen to again. But like, because of the COVID thing, like, they said, oh, no, so whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> but it can't be that bad if you're running marathons and running up fucking mountains and that. So you must be. So right. spurred me on, mate. Yeah. And you know what? Like when you when you get poorly, mate. Like especially, I, I think I think with the COVID thing as well. Like scared people in the fitness mm. vitality in it because like the majority of us probably had like I don't know picked up this disease, but the people with the strong vitality have managed to fight off. But if you, people with the weak vitality, um, low immune system, whatever, there. They're the ones that I don't know. A lot of people are dying out. Exactly. Like. So I think I, I've never seen so many runners in my life. Do you Jesus, know what? It's class. No matter no matter where you're driving. The, well, maybe two weeks ago. No matter yeah, where you're yeah. driving or where you were going, you look outside. There's people running everywhere. Yeah. And like I say, it is good to see everyone on this fitness hype. Going back to that though, obviously that was your last fight or over a year ago now. Have we seen the last of you? Have you got one more in you? Have you got a few more in you? What do you reckon? Because yeah. I know I know you have. Liam, you know I want it. I, I know you it. have. Do you know, I miss it? It's like you know. It's a purpose. Yeah, man, that's the thing though, isn't it? Like, mm. you, like you get bored and like, and like, you know, life gets boring sometimes, doesn't it? And you need some, and if, if I don't have something to direct myself into, that's why I'm doing these these, these crazy runs because it's giving me, although it's not like fighting, it gives me a purpose and aim. Direction. And yeah, yeah. And it gives me something to aim for. And like, and otherwise I'm going to get, I'll be a fat cunt. <laughs> going to loads of pieces, going to drink loads of booze, fucking smoke loads of weed. <laughs> yeah. Get bored out of my mind, you know what I mean? So yeah, so, I want to do it, but, Obviously, I see all this stuff, you know, like on Joe Rogan about the uh, the American footballers with the... Uh, CTE. And yeah, shit. the CTE and that lot. And that sort of like gets in the back of my head, but I think... Oh, well, we had Danny Mitchell on last week. He's got CTE and he's still fighting. So don't oh, worry about that. Right as rain is Danny yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, fuck it, I'm doing it then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, yeah. yeah. So that was your last fight. In between that, after that, you went on this fucking crazy desert island retreat yeah. thing where you had to live... Like Bear grills type shit, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah. you got on there and were it like five days with a specialist showing you how to live and then three days on your own, desert island, no technology, no food, catch your own food. Talk yeah, us through yeah. that because that sounds r- ridiculous. So I thought, you know, I didn't, I, didn't have, I didn't have shit to do, you know, and I didn't want fighting and stuff. So I wanted to like just get some stimulation in my life, you know, rather than direct it in the wrong direction by drinking, eating yeah. and smoking or whatever. Um so I'd seen this uh, Desert Island Survival thing and, I f- and just the title itself, I thought, fucking hell, that's me. That's- yeah. I was looking for like camping courses or something like bushcraft things, just something new, you know. And then uh, this guy called uh, uh, Tom Williams emailed me back. I, mean, I messaged him, he emailed me back and he's, uh, he said, oh yeah, we've got a trip running in Panama, um, November to December. Um, and it were over my birthday. 
And I thought, oh, fucking hell, what a sick birthday present to myself. Like, I mean, <laughs> just go Starve uh, myself yeah, on the yeah, desert yeah, yeah. three days. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm kinky that way. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you, you go, we went to Panama. There were seven of us, seven or eight of us. Go to an island. Um, there's no one on the island, just fucking coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> the Wilson. dogs, yeah, mate. Or, and a little ball. <laughs> Milky Joe. A, a little mitre, <laughs> or whatever, a little mitre ball with a face on it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I went to Desert Island for five days to teach you bushcraft. Yeah, you've got hammocks for five days. Teach you bushcraft. They teach you how to collect water, how to, like, you know, um, light fire in primitive sort of, in the, in the primitive way using, like, sticks and, like, uh, um, other, other devices. Um, and then just sort of, like, basically fend for yourself and, like, what to be prepared for, what to look out for. And, um, yeah, so the teacher skills. Um they take them towels around the island and, you know, teach swimming, spearfishing and all that stuff. For five days, it's, it's like a holiday then. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's nice, you're learning, it's a great place to learn. And three days ago, all right, you're on your own, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember all that shit? I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a machete. How many other people were you on there? There were seven of us. What yeah. were they like? Were they all right? Or were they there few, were sound? With yeah. a few weirdos in there. Well. A few wild cards. There were, there were a guy called, there was a guy called Doug. <laughs> and he had like a bear tattoo on his shoulder. What's up with the tattoo dog? <laughs> Got a story with Yes, I have. <laughs> he told me the story about like he met this female bear and he went near his cub. He went near the cub and they killed him, but like it faced off of him. I don't know if it was true, <laughs> but I believe him because he had like he had like a cool hat, you know, with like the things on. Oh, yeah. Like uh, the corks and the strings. Like an Australian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just had like all that yeah, and, yeah, he was a cool guy. He were a nomad. He were he were a nomad that lived in America. Right. A rich nomad though. <laughs> he made all the money in stocks and shares. <laughs> We were a proper cool guy, actually. Made loads of money in stocks and shares. He had a ranch, but he just travelled around America just fucking fighting crime or something. <laughs> <laughs> in his car car. Yeah, kung, yeah, doing kung fu and <laughs> fighting crime in different towns in America. But yeah, they were, they were him. He was like the nomad. He was his friend who was like the head of some sort of software company who didn't like it. He hated it. <laughs> Did he last? Yeah, but he didn't really speak to us. <laughs> but he was a nice guy, you know what I mean? But I think Doug, because Doug was like a nomad. He talked his pal to come into this desert island where, you know, <laughs> he probably would have said it sound all cushy to him, you know. Like, yeah, we've got like, you know, four poster beds and shit. <laughs> and then we got there. And like, but he got, he, he, you know what, he did well. And then there were a couple of guys, there were a couple of guys from down south who I became friends with. Um, a guy called Sam from Essex, who, um, who, who I became, became pals with too. And there were an older woman there called Tess. And uh, she was like, she was like a posh, old, older English woman. She like, I don't know, she was like 55, 60 or something. Um, but she was like, she was saving grace. She would make, she'd, be, she'd been practicing all year, making traps and shit. And shit she said, <laughs> like, like home alone. She, she said, I spoke to my kids and shit because I've been making traps. Kids walking upstairs, yeah. throw the paint can down. <laughs> yeah, man, she was doing shit like that. She had like a little plastic bucket which caught loads of crabs so we could fish with and stuff like that. But she's like, she was like, we, there, were, there was such a variation of people some were rich, some were poor. It's some cool like, when you meet new people like that and everyone's a bit different. Everyone's got their own like different take on stuff. It's totally. But we all leveled out because like when it comes down to it, like there's no like, doesn't matter about what you wear. No egos. Your money. No. no, it's all, the only thing that's important is fundamentals. Getting a bit of food, having a bit of shelter, a bit of fire, and then that's it. And that, that's all, that's all, that's all we needed. And when you get the basics, you're like, think shit, I, this is all I need in life, you know? And, um, so yeah, so we we did three days where um, we had to like build his own shelter and fucking we got eaten alive by fucking ants and shit. <laughs> we'll be with. Um, and then we get picked up on last day, like some guy comes over from speed bottle waving his fucking we're waving his shirts about and like we're calling him in and that like and he picks us up and he's got like a can of coke and, and like for three days all you've been sugar. eating all you've been eating is coconuts, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or fish like this big between between seven years. And um, best kind of cooking. Well, <laughs> it's like, you know, when you're making weight for a fight oh. and you're watching. I mean, I watched a bleach advert sometimes. <laughs> and because I had a liquid in so long. I'm like, mm, domestic. I do it with mouthwash, mate. I put it in. I'm thinking, yeah. Ooh, can, I a this? can I watch a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you, yeah. you love that so much. They then offered you a job as to come back and be one of the survival specialists and to train other people up, didn't they? Yeah, well... They must have seen me. I mean, it, it climbing my your life. Yeah, time my life, <laughs> climbing trees. I, I, I could have collected coconuts. So I've been like, like yeah, let's get this guy. He's good at climbing trees. You know what I mean? So we'll have him. Um, but yeah, no, they, they offered they offered me a they offered me a place. Just being like a helper, being a guide, and sort of learning bushcraft and stuff, which is fucking 
the dream come true for me. Um, and it was on my birthday as well, you know, when, when, we, when we were there as well. I had like best day, birthday ever, fucking middle of Panama. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was just a good time. And they saw that I enjoyed it so much. I refused to ask about it. Um, that they offered me the, to, come, to come back. So I'm going back in February. 2000, yeah, but 2021. Next year, year. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you were meant to go back this year, weren't you, to the Philippines, were it? Well, I, I meant to go back after my fight when I got sepsis, but because I was real, couldn't go. And then this time, um, obviously this COVID, shit, yeah. COVID. Um, and then so third time lucky, so I'm going to get there. But I, I went I went to go meet my new boss. I went to, we went to uh, the Philippines and we stayed on an island for like five days and like it was caught loads fishing all over the class. Um, but yeah. So that's yeah. So in between, in between uh, training and stuff like that, I'll be nipping off to buddy Panama every now and again and uh, spearing some coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sick, mate! Yeah. Right, I'm gonna wrap this up because we've been talking shit for a good while now. Yeah, man. And if we don't, I will literally stay here and chat shit with you all night. <laughs> uh, is there any Instagram tags, social media shout outs that you want to do before you go? Anything you want to shout out? Maybe tire shop, anything like that. What do you want to do? Oh yeah, I'll give a shout out to my, my tire shop, Archway Tires, Simpudzi, best tire shop in the world. <laughs> Maybe the universe, who knows? And um, what's <laughs> your social media tags? Uh Jordan.w.bc, that's my Instagram. Uh Jordan Watson on Facebook. And I, I started a Snapchat today, but <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I don't know, yeah. Sometimes they give me anxiety the mobile ones. I yeah. thought, I'll try a new one out and uh, yeah. Um what am I call them called Jordan underscore tire boy. <laughs> I thought I could change it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought oh, I'll just do it for now. I went tire shop when I did it, and I thought I'll change that. But yeah, shout out to my boys in the tire shop, um, Paul and Dave, and shout out to Mark Lindley. He's in hospital at the moment. Oh He's yeah, get well, get well, Mark. Yeah, hope you're hope you're okay, bro. Um, shout out to our last Lucy G. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, babe. You're the best, mate. Thank you. That was <laughs> thank a you. sick podcast. I'll see everyone again soon. Cheers, people.